fact, a work in progress. Swarm Lord, in your face. <laughs> so, work begins on my Capital City Bloodbath doubles list that I'm playing with Phil. Uh, I won't give away the other half of the list, but uh, spoiler alert. Gene Stealers. I'm playing them as Tyranids, so I'm going to have a Swarm Lord, a couple of Brood Lords, which I'm using my Patriarchs as. They're almost exactly the same anyway. And then I have 100 Gene Stealers here. Uh, so I got to get these done in the next three and a half weeks. Uh, so the first step I've done is I have uh, spray bond them all black. Uh, so I can skip the shading step completely. And my color scheme is going to be very simple. I want them to be Gene Stealer purple on the top. They're carapaces. And I want them to be white bellied or kind of dark gray bellied underneath. Um, part of that is twofold. First of all, it's really hard to spray the underside of these models. <laughs> Unless I take them all individually and spray them, uh, it's really hard and even then, now that they're on 32 mils especially, uh, kind of blocks it a lot. So all I'm going to end up doing is dry brushing white over whatever color is at the bottom. And then at the top, uh, i got nice layers of black, so I'm going to be dry brushing my jean stealer purple over them. And then I'm going to be picking out all the claws and scything talons or whatever they happen to have and I'm going to paint every tongue purple and all the eyes scarlet red. And that's going to be each gene stealer. And then I haven't figured out how to base them yet, so I'm going to figure that out. Probably do that all at the end. And then I'll be hopefully be able to spend a little bit more time on my Swarm Lord and my two Brood Lords, but I guess we'll see how much time we got. Um, they will at least be getting the basic color treatment. Uh, the Brood Lord, though, is a typical, it's more typical of Tyranids with these sort of chitinous plates so I'm gonna have to paint them a little bit different but um, yeah so that's gonna be good and um, we're gonna get started on that so I'll show you over here my test model just painted them in about two minutes so I just dry brushed uh, at first I would just dry brushed gray over the black. I was gonna have them all black and gray like ninja gene stealers, but then I'm like, ugh, didn't look that good. And I'm like, I want my gene stealers to be purple. So I just dry brushed a bunch of purple onto it. And you can see that it's quite, uh, it's quite cool and very simple and fast and straightforward. And then I've got my uh, claws that I picked out and I've dry brushed the white at the bottom there and uh, purple on the tongue red in the eyes yeah and it looks pretty good I gotta say for something that only took me a few minutes to do uh, so I'm quite happy with that as you know if you watch this series long enough I'm not one to spend billions of hours painting hordes and hordes of models I think it looks pretty good for the effort that I put in and uh, it will definitely do so that's my test model and I think that looks great. So I'm gonna keep going with these four colors and uh, we'll get back to you. All right, first 10 are done. Looks pretty good. Nice and simple, dark, purpley, claws, red eyes. White bellies going up onto the face there. Actually just dry brushing, blends it pretty well together. Uh, actually it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna do all the bases at the end. So 10 down, 90 more to go. So I thought uh, there's no point showing you more of the work in progress for the gene stealers since uh, I'm about uh, halfway done. I've done 50 of them now and uh, they're all exactly the same and that's kind of boring. So what I've done is I finally managed to get a hold of uh, Trigon. Uh, surprisingly hard to get a hold of. They're sold out on GW and I haven't gotten an email saying they're back in. None of the stores around here had one. Nobody in the used market in Ottawa has one eBay, you can get them, but they're like a hundred bucks. So it's like, can get a Trigon. And it is a part of the list. Uh, the plan was just to borrow fills, but it'd be nice to have my own. And um, finally, Dylan at uh, Multizone called me and he had one or he had one ordered or something and he had one and I picked it up. So I'm gonna put as a, a bit of a change from painting Gene Steelers cause it gets a little bit mind numbing after a while. I'm going to uh, put this Trigon together. And while I'm doing it, um, we can just talk uh, talk 40K. So we can get started. Um, so in terms of Trigon or Trigon Prime, 
I'm going to assemble the one that's easiest to build. So probably just the Trigon, because the Trigon Prime I think has extra arms. Um, and then I'll run it either as a Trigon or a Trigon Prime. I think that's very reasonable to do. I don't think most people can tell the difference between the two unless you're an actual hardcore Tyranid player and otherwise exactly the same model. So uh, I don't think it's unreasonable to just switch, uh, miss, swap back and forth between the two. Um, and, uh, and, that, and most people have no problems with that, I would presume. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do. So uh, we'll get started. So I've already cut and uh, taken off all the uh, lines for everything already because that's very tedious to watch. Um, but uh, yeah, so first it tells me to put this body part together, which kind of goes together like this. So here we go. So, I mean, how are people enjoying 40K right now? I'm loving it. Um, I think the meta is just starting to shape up. Uh, I wish people wouldn't swing the ban hammer so early. Um, at, like some people have in terms of Forge World and other units. And we've already had um, updates that limit things like Storm Ravens and stuff, which I just think is good. Well, let's talk about that. So in the first few big tournaments, ATC and ETC being the biggest, we saw a lot of Storm Raven spam. And by Storm Raven spam, I mean like as many Storm Ravens as you can fit in a list, which is like six or five or six or maybe even seven. And then you put like a, a jump pack character who can jump in and give them all rerolls for that one turn and basically tur tables you on turn one or turn two. Um, which is not very interesting or fun for anybody. And uh, so GW has uh, jumped on that amazingly, really quickly, and uh, said that uh, you can't do that, um, which is awesome. Uh, they have FAQ'd it so that flyers, so not flying, but flyers, do not count towards units um, being on the battlefield in terms of after the first turn in terms of whether you're tabled or not which is awesome and I already think I screwed this up um, so if you have nothing but flyers on the table after turn one you actually count as being tabled uh, so you auto lose uh, which is a nice change an interesting way of nerfing flyers Uh, so, I like it. I like that they quote-unquote nerfed flyers without actually changing the flyer in any way. They didn't make it weaker. They didn't um, change the points cost. Some would argue that the Storm Raven is under-costed, but, you know, that's a conversation for another day. They managed to change flyers for the better of the game without actually... Uh, nerfing it in any way, which I think is a healthy way of approaching it. They put a little bit of a, a little bit of a fluff spin on it. I think I, I already messed up this trigon. I was supposed to put that underneath, but I didn't, and now it kind of doesn't fit. But anyway, I think it'll be okay. Um, and uh, so I think they did a great job with that uh, flyer change there. I uh, better let that sit for a bit. It's a little bit. Uh, sketchy so um yeah so i think they did a great job with the flyer thing there and uh i'm hoping that uh, other changes that they make will be so considered and uh deliberate as opposed to reactionary so i think that's great otherwise in terms of the meta i mean inevitably it's a spam heavy meta right now um because what's when people are trying to figure out what's good it's fairly easy in isolation of just looking at unit sheets of figuring out what is what single units are good just based on damage output or points efficiency and then just spamming those because of course the the current um, way that armies are formed basically it's like uh, as somebody once said it's basically like um, open play like you can take whatever you want like this very it's very difficult to want to put out an army that you can't fit into one or more detachments the way they stand right now i mean it's very open um so 
as it stands right now, it's fairly easy to just field whatever you want. And uh, so, in that kind of open system, it's very easy. And so the easiest way is just to take what you want, that's good, and spam it. And that's what people are doing, and you can't blame them for that because nobody really knows what's good right now. Uh, if you take a spam army, you're tabling people in turn one or two. So what's better than that? For a competitive player, anyway, I'm talking about. So, um, so I think that's what's happened, and you know, you can't really blame people for that. It's boring, yes, but you know, that's what's going to happen. Um, so that's kind of what's happening with the meta right now, and hopefully with uh, considered changes and steady hand and maybe some tournament comping, um, we're going to see maybe more balanced, quote-unquote balanced lists becoming more popular in the meta. Um, and certainly, other than the most hardcore uh, tournaments, we are seeing more balance. Uh, even in our own tournament that we had, um, we didn't see hardly any crazy spam, except for maybe a couple of lists. Now, what you consider spam is up for debate. Uh, I would consider spam having, you know, an army that's predominantly like one model, <laughs> or having like over three of any particular model. So some people have proposed that a way to limit spam is say that you can't have more than three of any particular model. And I think, you know, that's fair enough. Um, whether or not that would work or not is unclear. But that's certainly one way of uh, trying to limit spam. You have to be a bit careful with this model. There's all sorts of uh, things that you have to make sure you do before you do other things and you have to kind of follow the instructions. All right, so that kind of goes together like that, locks that into place. This is the tail piece, so. I think we just kind of put some glue here. In various places along the tail. And uh, whack that together. So, uh, yeah, so that's kind of what's happening with the meta right now. Um, the first codex has just come out, and I'm going to be picking that up in about an hour from, um, from my supplier. And uh, so it'll be interesting. I don't think it's going to change the meta a huge amount. Space Marines just got better. They were already good with kind of Gulliman spam, gunline type spam. Um, and now this maybe makes them a little bit better by giving them more chapter tactics to spend their stuff on, uh, as well as uh, relics and better warlord traits and stuff like that. So I think Space Marines will definitely be back. The question is, so Space Marines got OPSEC in this uh, codex, so they have troops uh, are ob objective secured. So one, even one tr Space Marine troop on an objective will hold it uh, against any number of non-objective secured units or models because uh, normally you need more models within an objective to hold the objective but now that has been changed uh, with the OPSEC rules so that will be interesting in terms of um, how to meta so will we see the battle company back you know where you have spamming cheap imperial troops because you know that one imperial troop at the end of the game can hold that objective for you is that going to be a thing again and maybe it will be. So this bit, these uh, horns at the back are half formed and you have to put these other parts onto it. That is a bit of a pain. Um, see how that goes. So yeah, so that's kind of, Space Marines got the OPSEC back. So the question is whether we see Battle Company back and by battle company, I mean spam, space marine troops uh, that are obsec. They just outlast you with uh, numbers and rhinos, and then uh, just hold the objectives and win. Win by you know surviving and you running out of time and taking out taking them all out. 
and if even one marine survives you you lose that objective and to be honest now that rhinos are so much harder to kill and razorbacks that is a very uh, valid way of playing a space marine army if you sprinkle in a few special weapons or a heavy weapon or two i mean you've got a a, a good force there um and the other thing is you could take Razorbacks with Assault Cannons and actually do a lot of damage too. So I think we're going to see that. Uh, I've already made a cheeky little list that uses um, Raven Guard Chapter Tactics. Um, Raven Guard Chapter Tactics gives you minus one to hit if whoever's shooting you is outside of 12 inches. Um, which is very good. Um, so if that's kind of like the Raven Guard's own Dark Shroud. And um, for infantry bikers and uh, dreadnoughts, I believe. So it doesn't apply to vehicles. But obviously, if you're sticking a tactical squad on an objective and they're minus one to hit, and it's in cover, if you place your objectives in cover, and so now they're also two up to save, that's going to be very hard to dislodge those Marines. So I think that's definitely a thing. And um, the other cool thing about Raven Guard, of course, is Shrike. So K Van Shrike, the chapter master for the Raven Guard, he is a jump pack dude, and he can bring in three units. Um, well, he doesn't bring in three units, so he's not like Lias Isodon. But if you bring him in with a few units of uh, jump packs, two or three units of jump packs, Assault Marines, uh, maybe a heavy weapon or two or a special weapon, and they all drop in with him. He has a six inch bubble re rolls, which is awesome, and a six inch bubble re roll charges, uh, which is great. Um, so, uh, a nine inch charge with a re roll um, is 47% chance of making that charge, 50 50 odds. So that's pretty decent. And uh, tie people up, and then you have all these Razorbacks in the back with OBSEC. Uh, two plus save, minus one to hit, troops floating around getting progressive objectives and maelstrom. So I think that's a pretty decent list. Uh, maybe sprinkle in a, a, a some devastators in the back. I might try that out on one of these uh, one of these bat reps. All right, so that's looking pretty good. I got these uh, little things in there. It wasn't as painful as I thought it'd be. Now the next thing is I have to put this carapace on. I'm not sure how this fits in. I think this just sits on top of there. Yes, it does. So we'll just uh, pop some glue on this. And this just goes on top of there. So yeah, so I'm gonna grab the codex and see how I can make that list. Uh, look for warlord traits and things like that and then I'll make that list and probably end up playing it at some point. But that's a pretty cool list to play. Of course, I'm not painting up another 100 Marines in black. They'll just have to be, uh, uh, you know, green the Green Raven chapter or something. <laughs> Luckily, none of my guys is marked with Dark Angels, so that's okay. Um, and then I'll have to get a hold of Shrike, I think, because he's a cool model anyway. I'll get a hold of Shrike. I wonder if he's a... Uh, I'll see today if, the, if he's available at the store when I go later. Okay, so that's basically the torsos complete. And um, I've already done the tail while I was waiting for that bit to set. So the next bit here is the tail assembly. So we got to put those two pieces of the tail together, uh, which is this piece and this piece. And I think it just goes like this. So here we go. So what do people think of the new Primaris Marines? Now Primaris Marines until this point have been lackluster. They have no options, they're a bit expensive for what they are, and they have no way of moving around the board. No transports of course. But now there are more of them. There's a captain, there's a librarian, there's a chaplain, there's an apothecary. Haven't seen the point cost but they're probably appropriately more than the non-Primaris equivalent. They now have the repulsor tank and there's a dreadnought 
Uh, so they have become a lot more powerful, I think. Now granted, your Primaris Force is going to be probably like 30% smaller than your non-Primaris Force. So I wonder if they're actually going to hold up in the meta. Um, as, a, as a viable thing to play all Primaris. I don't know. We're just going to have to see how it pans out. Um, but uh, it would be interesting to see how that works. Alright, now this tail part kind of wax onto there. The Dreadnought certainly looks tasty. Uh, it's obviously more expensive than a normal Dreadnought. The model is about as large, maybe even slightly larger than a Leviathan, which is crazy. Um, but uh, certainly um, something that I'm going to pick up and build. And if I like the model, which I'm not sure I like it more than a Leviathan model, I might well just run it, counts as, in casual games. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how that pans out. So there's a bunch of... Next it tells you to attach it to the base and then attach the bits together. What I might do, and then there's like all these armor plates and stuff to go on. I think I'll leave the torso separate for now and just put the armor plates on. Uh, unless the armor plates overlap, which I don't think they do. Let's see. I think that one goes on like that, so it doesn't really overlap with anything. Maybe I should just follow the instructions, eh? <laughs> um, so I'm gonna pop it on the base like this. There we go. Yeah, and similarly, the Repulsor tank, I think it's kind of expensive, but we'll see. It comes with a lot of guns, but I'm sure a lot of those guns you have to pay for. So I think it's going to add up. If it gets anywhere near a Land Raider, then the question really becomes if it's worth it or not, or just run normal Marines in a Land Raider. Um, of course, it is the only way to get Primaris across the board, so if you want to run Primaris, you're going to have to run that tank. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit weird how they don't let anybody take Primaris. I mean... Uh, and then you can't fit normal marines in that tank. <laughs> you know, it's a massive tank and you're, you can't fit normal marines in it. So uh, it's a little bit funny how that how that is. But Okay, so here it says um, that you can have any one of these plate options on the chest. You can have the one with spikes, you can have the one with glands, or just the plain, plain uh, chitinous plates. So I'm kind of looking at these and I'm like... Okay, the glands is kind of cool, if I mind painting it. Then there's the ones without the little spikes, and then there's the one with the with the spines. The little spines. So what I'm going to do, uh, I think I'm either going to do the one just plain, or this glands thing. Um, so what I might actually do, I think I'll do the glands. And then at the bottom, there's these... Uh, two that go for the tail, of course, one with spines and one without spines. So I'm going to do the one without spines that goes on there. Just like so. And then the glands goes on there. And then this goes on there. So actually, there's very little um, overlap. There's no overlap, actually. So I'll just stick this on right now. Okay, so that's kind of the torso assembled and the, uh, the tail assembled and stuck on the base. Next up will be the head. And then we'll be basically finished, and then we'll be arms, and then we'll be done. So I think I'm going to leave this. I'm not going to attach it together for now. We'll just leave these two assemblies separate and go from there. 
All right, uh, I kind of ran out of batteries on the old camera and uh, didn't want to wait around for it to recharge and needed to finish this off. So I've kind of re, I finished off the trigon here, uh, putting on the arms and the head and putting it all together here. Um, so that is done, pretty cool model. Uh, a little bit painful to assemble, literally, because keep getting hit by all the spikes. <laughs> but otherwise, a pretty cool model, quite an impressive little thing, and uh, should be fun painting it up. So that actually goes over here beside my other griblies, and uh, so that's a nice little break from painting teen stillers. But alas, all good things must come to an end, and we must carry on. Uh, we're halfway through. We're done 50, so we've got another 50 to do.